All right, good morning and uh, welcome to this morning's uh, weekly mentoring hour. Uh, it's a pleasure always to get together like this and be able to talk about uh, matters which are on our hearts. So we will talk about one such subject uh, this morning as well. Before that, let's begin with a word of prayer. Uh, I'd like to request uh, anyone from the audience, either faculty or students, to please go ahead and lead us in a word of prayer, and then we will get into this morning session. Our gracious, loving, heavenly Father, God, we praise and thank you, Lord, for this precious time. Lord, you have lovingly given us, oh Lord God, Father God, as we have all gathered this morning. Lord, to understand the ways in which, oh Lord God, your children should lead in this world and be as ambassadors for you, oh Father God, Lord. Lord, have blessed this session, enable us to have a Lord, an enriching experience, and Lord God, help us to implement those in our lives. We come at this time, this date, into your hands. Be glorified and be magnified, for we ask all this in the most precious name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Esther. Uh, we've had a couple of sessions uh, this semester on the subject of leadership. Uh, but today, uniquely, we're going to look at what followership is all about and how that is also important. So I just hand over this time to Pastor Roshan to um, uh, you know, enlighten us on this subject of followership. Over to you, Pastor Roshan. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining in. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, um, right, so this whole uh, topic has been on my heart for a while. Um, <clears throat> I've been studying on this for at least four or five years now on the topic of followership, but it was all birthed out of uh, while studying about uh, on the topic of leadership. Um, yeah, so uh, I want to make one thing very clear uh, that um, this is just another side of the same coin, right? Um, so we have a coin, and you know, if you played any game, and if you say, if you said, let's put a toss, um, you know, so, and I don't know about you, when I've, you know, um, called a toss, uh, you know, that when a coin went up, most of the times, very rarely, I've uh, called out tails, right? Um, I don't know about you. <laughs> Uh, most of the times, you know, we tend to call out, okay, heads, heads, and heads, you know. So it's, um, but so I think leadership is a topic like that. And followership is also such a topic where um, it there are two sides of the same coin, but we tend to look at only one side of the coin, uh, which is uh, leadership. And, that's, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I want to make that very clear, right? Um, because there is... Um, so much talk uh, in this day and age, especially about being a good leader, uh, you know, uh, being able to delegate or being, being able to handle situations very well, uh, being able to lead uh, very well, you know, to be like Mr. Captain Cool, or uh, MS Dhoni, you know, things like that, seize the day, um, etc. cetera. Um, you know, if the thousands of books on leadership, um, <laughs> I uh, I can hardly I'm not sure if there are any books on followership. There are so many conferences, workshops, seminars on uh, leadership, um, and one of our actually one of our churches, our location churches, meets in a school, and there you know, see posters all around about saying how we train the students to become you know great leaders of tomorrow. Um, it's just all this pressure. Uh, and talk about being great leaders uh, and if you don't become a leader you're a failure in life kind of thing uh, you know but 
Uh, but yeah, let me just share some of the, uh, in the chat section, I'll put uh, the, some of the key words that um, that's searched on the topic of leadership. Uh, you see people look for, every time they, they Google search for, uh, for leadership, these are probably the topics that they go for, like leadership codes, leadership conferences, academy, what is leadership, leader, leadership development. Leaders, definitions on leadership institute, <laughs> leadership institute training. You, you, you get the whole point, right? Um, these are all something that you and I would have searched for, but uh, and it, very rarely we uh, we speak about being a, a a good follower or followership in general. I'm sure we do in you know not in the exact word as followership or follower, but I just wanted to share a little bit. I'm in no way any expert on this topic um, yet. I'm just doing my uh, studies and on this. So yeah, well, so what is uh, followership? It's simply, it is the ability to take direction well, uh, to get in line behind a program, to be part of a team, and to deliver on what is expected um, of you. That's simply what a followership is, right? Um, how well? the followers follow is probably just as important to any organization or an enterprise as success uh, as how well a leaders lead. Okay, um, so how well a follower follows uh, is just as important to the success of an enterprise or an organization to how well a leaders lead. Um, because, uh, you know, you would have heard this compliment saying, uh, you know, you are an excellent follower. That's like a backhanded compliment, you know. Hey, this person follows really well, uh, you know. So, but it might not, it, it it's not necessarily the kind of reputation a person, uh, a very competitive person in a corporate office would want. I, yeah, you know, but I want to be on top of the ladder, <laughs> right? Uh, but that's a gist of what a followership is, is simply the ability to take direction well and to get in line behind a team or your organization or your leader and get the vision right and to be part of that and to deliver on what is expected of you. It's what it is. And it is um, in this day and age, uh, it is very important to be a good follower. Uh, there is a season to follow and there is a season to lead. So uh, the challenge uh, that I've observed, this is again my observation and my opinion is uh, from what I've observed being part of ministry and whatnot is everybody wants to be a born leader. Everybody wants to be a leader right away. Uh, nobody's willing to go through the process of what it is. Uh, you know, to follow someone. Um, and so, and there is a season to follow, there is a season to lead. If uh, everybody wants to be queens and kings, uh, who will be soldiers, right? And if everybody wants to, to be served, who will serve? And if everybody wants to be a leader, who will follow, right? Um, so there is a season like, like a Joshua to a Moses, and as you can see on the screen, uh, Elisha to Elijah, Ruth to Naomi, or Timothy to Paul, disciples of Jesus, uh, for that matter. Um, right? So a season to uh, follow and a season to lead. Right? Uh, I just want to make a side note book suggestion, which is, uh, which is called Armor Bearer by Terry Nance. Uh, this is something that you can uh, look at. OK, so yeah, let's m move on. Um, I just want to share very quickly some of the marks of a good follower. While you're in the season of following um, someone, or following a leader, or, or uh, you know, part of you're a follower in a team or uh, in an organization, you get the whole point, right? So how the, some of the marks of a good follower in this season is one, uh, in this season, 
you learn to serve wholeheartedly right um you know don't have an agenda of okay when am i going to become a leader when am i going to become a leader when am i going to become a leader don't make that your obsession don't um but in this season of following someone serve wholeheartedly uh you know it I've used this example many times, but in Exodus chapter 40, we see about Moses. Uh, it, you know, in that chapter, last chapter of Exodus, we see a, um, this statement that's being made saying, uh, Moses did just as the Lord commanded, at least eight times in that chapter. He did as the Lord commanded. He did as the Lord commanded. He did as the Lord commanded. That means he, Moses served wholeheartedly. He obeyed the Lord. And uh, another great story that comes to my mind is David. Uh, one of the greatest promotion of his life came on the day where he just simply served his father. Uh, you know, I'm talking about the day that uh, David went on to become a giant killer. But I'm sure David woke up that morning thinking, you know, it's just another morning. Or he didn't wake up thinking, okay, today I'm going to get promoted to becoming a, from a shepherd to a giant killer. Uh, no, it, it says that his father, Jesse, calls David and says, take this bread and cheese and go give it to your brothers uh, who are at war in the battlefield. And so David just served his father and said, okay, father, I will take this and I will go give it to my brothers. And it is in the process of just simply serving, God can use that season uh, and to elevate you, uh, you know, from being a shepherd to a giant killer. But it all begins with this, uh, uh, with this attitude to serve, uh, right? There's this a very famous quote. Um, it says, "Rule with the heart of a servant, and serve with the heart of a king." Right. And the second point, which oh, great quickly want to move on to okay the first one is serve wholeheartedly um so the second point is submit to authority uh, so there's a difference between submission and uh, obedience right uh, you can obey someone even if you uh, be simply because you have to uh, you don't feel like it you have to obey it depends on the kind of person that you are leading or the part uh, or the kind of team or an organization that you are part of right so submission uh, differs from obedience it uh it it is pointing to the posture of your heart or um it, it implies to a positive heart attitude so to speak right um so submission is a choice to joyfully put ourselves under the authority of another okay i'll say that again submission is a choice to joyfully uh, put ourselves under the authority of another. Uh, one of the first worship leaders in the Bible had serious problems with uh, with submission. Uh, but then we see that in, and there are so many examples, good examples in the Bible. One of them comes to my mind is from First Chronicles chapter twenty-five. Uh, you know, students from praise and worship or worship ministry will know this first chronicles chapter 25 we see that the sons of asaph heman and jerithin uh, and and all of them were under the supervision of the king right they were all under the supervision or in other words they were they were under the submission there right uh, i just want to uh share something on a personal note um so I was part. Uh, I, I was part of a Christian band. I, I used to play the drums, and um, so, and every time we were getting called to lead worship in different uh, churches or events, um, our worship leader, uh, the singer, the lead vocalist, will come and share the song list with us, uh, with the six of us in the band, and say, "Okay, we're going to do so and so, so and so." And uh, I couldn't mind my own business. Because and I question is like, do you think that song would work? Do you really think that song would work? I don't think that Hindi song will work with this audience here. Uh, you know, and over the 15 years we've had a lot of conversations like that. But then uh and, and one thing what the vocalist would say or the worship leader would tell me is, hey, trust me, trust me on this, trust me on this. He will share with the whole team about uh, why he's chosen that song. 
uh, and okay, so now I know okay, where he wants to go. But even I was in disagreement after the end of that program. Uh, the song that I didn't want to be part of the set uh, would have worked perfectly. And uh, I was like, huh. Right. So uh, there's something about uh, trusting the leader, even if you don't feel like it, um, which as long as that is not ethically questioned, uh, right? So ethically or morally questioned, that's a different topic altogether. So uh, serve wholeheartedly, submit to authority, and uh, slander no one. Uh, so when you are a follower, uh, it is very easy and very tempting um, to um, talk ill or bad about people around you in the team and also especially uh, our leaders or the person that you are following right uh, because leaders are a very easy targets of gossip and criticism and so as part of a team member or a follower it is very important um, that you also you know protect yourself your heart your spirit your soul uh, from being uh, polluted by slandering uh, but you also protect your leader right in um, Titus chapter 3 uh, verse 1 and 2 I'll, I'll put it on the chat section for us Titus chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 it says remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities to be obedient to be ready for every good work to speak evil of no one to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Right. So it does talk about uh, all people, but uh, and I also want to uh, emphasize on protecting our leaders because they are easy targets of gossip and criticism. And as a follower, it is very important that you protect your heart um, as well. Okay. So slander is a big no-no for a good follower. Uh, there was a saying in the World War Two during the times of World War Two, and, and this is a very nice book. You can uh, read it when you can. It's called "Turn the Ship Around." Uh, it says uh, the, uh, the famous saying was "Lose lips, sink ships." Lose lips, sink ships. Um, so, in other words, it's saying that uh, that ship was as strong as uh, the power of discretion. In other words, right? Uh, talking about work matters inappropriately um, was at best unhelpful and more likely harmful. So um, serve wholeheartedly, submit to authority, and slander no one. Right? Um, so uh, I hope you all are with me. Uh, just give me two, three more minutes, and uh, you know we'll we'll be done. Um, so when Eventually, when you uh, move on to become a leader, you don't stop following because uh, as a Christian, we are all called to follow uh, Jesus, um, to be his disciples. We are the follower of Christ. We are followers of Christ, right? So, um, and this is where our following game just goes up another level, right? So we don't stop following when we become a leader. Um, you know, I was, when I was just doing a study about uh, discipleship um, a while ago, and from the culture, uh, from uh, um, from the Jewish culture's point of view, um, you know, um, they started school at the age of two. The Jewish kids, they would put them uh, in, and and they would go to uh, you know a, a rabbi, and uh, that was a school from the age of two, and by the by the time that they are eight or ten, they know the whole of Old Testament uh, by heart. They knew the whole of Old Testament by heart. Kids, you know, eight-year-old, ten-year-olds, um, and after they completed that, let's say, let's just call it high school, they had two, two choices. The children had two choices. One, they could, if they could afford, and if they could, had the, uh, um, yeah, if they could afford, uh, they could. Uh, go to a rabbi uh, and you know continue being a student or they could follow in their family business their you know profession whatever it is fishing what whatever and so as a student i would go to this rabbi and say can i be your disciple can i be your disciple and then the rabbi would take a call and decide on his marks you know etc and say okay 
you can be my follower. But Jesus did the opposite. He went to the people and said, follow me. Right? And so there's this incredible call on our lives to be followers of Jesus Christ. And we all know that, right? Uh, and so we don't stop following when we become a leader. We continue to trust in him when things get hard and uncertain. And as good follower, the mark is that we learn to listen to the voice of the shepherd, that we become familiar with his uh, voice. Because in John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And Psalm 23 says, he leads me in the path of righteousness. That means if he leads, I should be willing to follow. Right? Uh, Psalm 139, search me and know me, O God, and, and see if there's any wicked ways in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. That means there is a willingness to follow. I want to be led by you because I know your ways are beautiful. Uh, you know, and the Bible talks about all of, uh, you know, it says his ways are righteous. His ways are higher. His ways are holy. His ways are just. Uh, his ways reveal who he is. He is the way. And so uh, he's revealed all of this to us in the scriptures. And it is up to us to be a good follower and say, um, yes. So uh, that's in a gist. This is so much to talk about on this topic, but uh, it, we could go in a hundred different direction. Uh, but I just wanted to share very briefly uh, on the importance of being a good follower in a culture where only one side of the coin is looked at and uh, we need to teach our people the importance of being a good follower the importance of uh, the importance to serve um, to have that attitude of serving and to not to not to yearn for platforms um, etc okay but well, thank you for listening. Uh, now you may now direct all your question towards Pastor Nancy and uh, other pastoral team. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Sure. Uh, thank you, Pastor Roshan, for this uh, unique perspective. I know we do talk about it, but not as much. And uh, good to dwell on the subject of followership and see how um, this is important, uh, not necessarily with the uh, thought that, you know, one day we're going to be a leader, but just sincerely being a good follower. Uh, yeah, so crucial. Uh, yes, of course, we can have our questions right now. I just want to uh, encourage all of us, if you have any questions about followership or any connected subject, or any other subject, absolutely different subject, please feel free. You can uh, uh, ask your questions and we'll, we'll direct it to the appropriate people. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You may unmute and ask or even post it on the chat, please. Uh, yeah. While we wait on yeah. a question, Pastor, it's just one one final thought, if I may add. Yes. Uh, you know, many leaders or who appear to be leaders uh, will have. Uh, we need, it's very important for us to understand the difference between um, a fan versus a follower. Uh, for example, um, Justin Bieber ha has a lot of fans, uh, but uh, Martin Luther King had a lot of followers. And uh, Jesus, again, in the Gospels, we see that time and time again, he separated the crowd or the fans uh, who just wanted to come and see him uh, uh, and his followers. So when he made this uh, famous sermon, uh, which was not very famous, he said, eat my body, drink my blood. Uh, you see a lot of the fans or the crowd left and only his followers stayed back. Um, right. So followers are someone who are willing to pay the price. And if not for Thomas, uh, who was a follower of Jesus, uh, you know, the Christianity would not have reached uh, India. Uh, and uh, I'm sure God in his sovereignty would have brought his message to our land. But uh, very thankful to a follower of Jesus uh, who brought the message of the gospel to our land. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you for that uh, thought. Maybe I can begin with, uh, you know, a question. Uh, I was just wondering about um, how do we make up our mind to follow someone? 
uh, what could be some of the motivating factors to pick someone as that one leader who we want to follow? Uh, any comments on that? Uh, every time that, again, this is my personal uh, way of, if I, um, one, one factor is that, uh, you know, they earn my trust. Uh, in you know in that and how I how I learn to trust them is I see that uh, they follow the voice of God I'm just talking about a Christian leader here um, so again it's going back to two different kinds of worship leaders in my life uh, that I I learned a lesson from was one again a person called Nixon um, so you know when he was leading worship he would come to the whole band and say these are the songs I'm picking uh, and uh, and we did that for like 12 13 years and I know okay um, he knows what he's doing he is following he's sensitive to the voice of god he prepares uh and i think preparing is one of the important parts and i see how a person prepares comes prepared uh, to lead the people and then there was another worship leader called ray uh he would come and he would not talk about the songs he would not tell us what songs he's doing uh, but he would just step into the prophetic uh, and then on in the beginning it was very scary because we were until that point we were like this musicians who were like tell me the scale uh, which key are we doing this in what's the time signature and then we'll follow you but no he just said no just follow me and uh, and it 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 was just it took me just one session to trust him uh, and that was to know that okay this man hears and follows the voice of god and so there was the preparation process from one person and there was this person who was sensitive to the leading of uh, and so I think for me personally that was very important is if I want to follow a, a leader uh, I want to know that this person is sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit from his word or uh, you know just being sensitive and so that's my take Pastor Nancy um, yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, that, that's uh, really helpful. Uh, we'll just hold on for some questions from uh, others here. Yeah, we have a we have uh, a post by Sanjay. I'll read it out. He says, "We honor soldiers who lay down their lives for country and king. They lay down their lives for a country and a king that uh, won't last forever." This is not my prediction. History is a witness to this phenomenon where kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, where kings rise and kings fall. But our king, that is Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for us, will reign forever and his kingdom will last forever. How much more honor and glory should we give to him who truly is above all? Thank you, uh, Sanjay, for sharing that. As followers of uh, Jesus Christ, we have that assurance that he's the eternal king and uh, the best person to uh, follow, the best person to submit your life to. And how wonderful. Uh, any other queries? And just one thought. Uh, yes, Pastor. Just a couple of uh, scriptures, actually. Um, I just thought um, there are a couple of scriptures which caught my attention. One is um, like 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 1, where uh, <coughs> Paul tells the Corinthian church, you know, imitate me. Um, just as I also imitate Christ, so he being a leader, a spiritual leader, a father, the one who started the church, established the church there, so saying, oh, you know, you imitate me, uh, follow me as I imitate Christ." So I think that's a good um, plumb line or a uh, you know, good guideline to follow. is the person whom I'm following are they following Christ? And the same thing I think in um, uh, Hebrews 13 and verse seven. You know? Where um, Hebrews thirteen seven, um, where the exhortation is: Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of, word of God to you, whose faith follow, and then uh, considering the outcome of their conduct. So uh, follow, you know, uh, follow their testimony, follow their faith, but consider the outcome of their conduct. Um, so same. Same as what Paul says, you know, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So uh, that's a uh, you know, good guideline to have. Um, yeah, just thought I'd like add that. Thank you. 
Thank you, Pastor. Yes, that's uh, helpful for us to know that we must be following after those who are uh, ready to imitate Christ and uh, to really follow by their conduct and their life example. Yeah, any other um, thoughts or questions, please, please feel free to uh, unmute and ask. Okay, uh, Sam has a question here in the chat. He says, as a follower of leaders, what are some signs to let go, considering it's a season? Would you like to address that, Pastor Roshan? Uh, you want to answer that and then probably I'll add to it. Okay, okay. sure. Okay, so... Um, uh, what are some signs to let go? So Sam, I'm understanding this as um, from the followers' uh, perspective, uh, uh, when you know you sense that it's time to move on. Um, I personally feel that it's the hardest thing, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, it depends on the assignment. We we see that God gives us life assignments. Uh, and uh, also very many assignments which could be uh, shorter uh, for a season in our lives. And during those shorter assignments, when we are connected to a leader, uh, uh, most likely, you know, at the end of that assignment, when you come to complete uh, what was required, uh, uh, we may actually move place or we may move into the next assignment. And it is uh, important at that that um, time to actually transition uh, nicely but clearly so that uh, you are fully engaged in your next assignment. Um, so uh, it will require a discernment. So uh, signs is what you're asking. So signs would be completion of that assignment. Signs would be uh, a sense of... Um, uh, confirmation in our own spirit by the Holy Spirit. Uh, so, you know, we have peace about the matter of moving on. Um, and uh, yeah, so completion of the assignment and peace in our hearts, I think, would be two signs. And as I stated earlier, to be able to communicate that uh, nicely and uh, move on from the assignment. But that does not mean, you know, we uh, cut off ties uh, in terms of our relationship. We could still have great relationship with those leaders, uh, but move on to the next assignment. So those are some thoughts uh, from my end. Yes, Pastor Mishra. I think, Pastor Nasi, you, you answered uh, what I wanted to share. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Sam, it's uh, again about discerning, just being sensitive to God's voice, his leading, um, his His guidance uh, in our lives uh, and so at least that's how uh, he's helped me discern the seasons in my life uh, from at least from the time I was 18 I can remember that he would tell that okay my season there is over um, he would not necessarily say what's next but then he would say that my season there is over and what is important is to be able to uh, discern the seasons and continue to rely um, on on the leading of the Holy Spirit and and as also just to re-emphasize what Pastor Nancy mentioned that um, it's um, you know leaving on a good note or moving on on a good note is very important um, as well. So yeah, thank you, uh, Pastor Roshan. So I always remember uh, this one statement: "Don't burn your bridges." So just because you're moving on, it doesn't mean yeah. that you know you you need to disconnect in a uh, very um, unpleasant way. Pleasant, yeah. People in your life. Yeah, sure. Thanks, uh, Sam, for that really important question. Any follow-up question to that? Or any other aspect to discuss about? Uh, Surin has a question in the chat. She asks, 
as a follower, what are the things that you can follow in a leader? Uh, somewhat similar to our earlier question of picking a leader. But uh, yes, I think we can answer this question. Yeah, Pastor, uh, as in, um, I mean, just take all the good qualities, uh, as in just a very realistic, practical uh, in world qualities as well. Like, uh, is it, I mean, if the leader is competent, you learn that from him. Is the leader, uh, the leader's work ethic, um, uh, leader's honesty, uh, leader's character, leader's integrity, um, all of those good things, and also the spiritual aspect of it. Uh, you know, the, under the, the practical and the realistic stuff is all these um, the competence. Uh, is, is the leader, you know, being able to make good decisions, judgments? Um, is the leader courageous? Is the leader how is the leader's work ethics? Uh, you know, is the leader on time, etc., uh, etc. Et Those are all the practical, in world, real world things versus the uh, spiritual as well. Um, is uh, is is the leader walking in godly conduct, etc., uh, etc. Et so those are all the things that you can uh, pick up from a leader. And I, and you again, like as you mentioned, that be some something that we answered in the previous session as well on picking a good leader. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Surin has. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, Surin, is this uh, a follow up to your earlier question or an independent one? But anyway, I'll go ahead and read Rin's first and then go uh, back to uh, Nina's question. She asks Is it fine if we copy the way they dress, uh, say things, etc.? Uh, so, uh, okay, uh, this, I want to say it in two different ways. One is like, uh, when we talk about disciple or discipleship, um, it, again, there's a saying in the, in the Jewish culture, it's called in the dust of the rabbi, in the dust of the rabbi. That means, uh, the end goal of the discipleship process is for the disciple to, uh, be like the rabbi. Uh, you know, in their in his conduct, in his, in the way that he knows the word, in um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and so, and in the dust of the rabbi, that that saying comes from. You walk so closely with the rabbi, so that as the as you know, as the rabbi walks, the dust that's coming off the sandals is on yours as well. And so, um, and um, so that's the a good part about it. But then, um, but to answer your question here, and I, in this context. Um, want to copy the way they dress and say things? Um, would I do it? Um, not really, but um, but you take inspiration. You are inspired by you know. Um, in that in that inspiration, don't lose your uniqueness. Um, and uh, like as a as a young worship leader, you know, for example. Michael W. Smith was one of the first English worship leaders that I was introduced to, or I seen. It, this is in early 2001 or 2002 when I saw all those big instruments. And series, I was like, "Oh Lord, what is this?" Right? Until then, I was playing tambourine in the church, uh, <laughs> uh, and so you know his guitar was a little low, and I was like, "Oh, what brand of guitar is he using?" Uh, you know, I wanted that guitar, uh, and so you learn. We are. You know, as as children from uh, from our toddler's age, we kind we like to imitate. That's uh, that's an innate thing. Uh, you know, children tend to copy us, uh, the adults. Uh, so you you learn a lot of things uh, in that process, but then uh, it's very important for us to remember who we are and to stay true to uh, our uniqueness and to find your own voice, to find your identity and not lose your identity in, in the process of uh, taking inspiration from someone. So I would say inspiration versus copy, uh, they're two very different things. Thank you for that uh, point, Pastor Roshan. So be inspired, but don't copy uh, every aspect of the leader. Uh, now, coming to Nina's uh, question here, uh, she's asking, um, can we say in order to be a good follower or submit to authority in any given situation, it will be possible to do it in the way it needs to be done when we submit to God and he enables us to be good followers. 
Uh, so I think I'll just uh, direct this question to Pastor Jay Kumar. Pastor Jay Kumar, would you like to comment on this? I'm yeah, just trying to understand the question, actually. Um, in order to be good followers or submit to authority, and again, would it be possible to do it in the way it needs to be done? Um, if okay. we submit to God and He enables us to be good followers, I think uh, uh, my understanding, uh, Nina, you can correct me, is when we submit to God, then we'll be able to submit to the leader the way it needs to be done. Is that a correct uh, way of looking at it? Yeah, I think it'll be good if you can clarify, Nina. Like, um, okay. yeah. Sure. So, uh, all right. Nina, would you like to Yeah. Um, if, is, is it okay if I unmute? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes uh, Nancy, that's what I meant. So, because um, in that particular, the way it is, uh, the hierarchy of any, whether it's at home or church, when we uh, do that, I mean, when we submit uh, to God, and um, then He gives us the right thing. I mean, He gives the ability to be able to do it how it is meant to be. No, I mean, within a situation, whether it's in church or so, He gives us the ability and the grace to do that, to be able to submit, because there is the way in all these how these things function. So, like, even if it's at home, like, okay, uh, if we have differing opinions or whatever. So, but when we keep that overall perspective that, okay, uh, we submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That's what I mean. So that way, then we are able to submit in the right way. That's what, that was my question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and very true, you know, because, um, well, God is the author of... Um, uh, this divine, um, I think, design here, uh, you know, he has designed, um, um, or, or you can say, you know, authority, the flow of authority. So he has designed it. So whenever we submit to his design, we are actually submitting to his word. And when we submit to his word, there is always the grace that we receive uh, and the authority that we receive to uh, carry out the assignment, you know, uh, like James, we read, submit to God and resist the devil. So, you know, when we are submitting to his divine design, uh, we are actually submitting to his word, submitting to his authority. And therefore, um, you know, we, we receive that flow of grace, empowering of grace to fulfill that assignment. So, so yes, um, what you're saying is, uh, yeah, very true. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Kumar, and thank you, Lina, for clarifying that question. Um, we go on to Sri Radha's question here, where she states, and sometimes, Pastor, when we follow someone, we become like them. Maybe we're not copying them, but unknowingly, we adopt some of the things from them. Is that right? So just leave it open to anyone who may want to answer that. Yeah, I think uh, it's kind of natural um, for that to happen, uh, Sri Radha, is, um, yeah, you're not intentionally wanting to copy, but then you are just inf inf influenced, uh, I should say, um, by the way they conduct or themselves, or, yeah, by the way they just do life. Uh, you know. Yeah, I think it's okay, but then uh, it's, uh, but you need to just, uh, you know, keep asking yourself, uh, are you being true to yourself? Uh, you know, is this, uh, like, again, just going back to the rinse, rinse question as well is, uh, it's very important that we don't lose our identity in that process. It's very important because um, God has a unique plan for you uh, that he wants to do in and through you. So it's very important that we don't lose the sight of that. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for clarifying, uh, Pastor Oshin and Sridhar. I hope yes, she says thank you, Pastor, uh, and that has addressed her question. Uh, so, if there are any further questions, we could take it up. We have a couple of minutes. Uh, if not, we could uh, pray and wrap up for today.
All right. Um, so uh, I think we will pray and close for today. And uh, uh, we take back with us so much about followership and uh, how God gives us an opportunity to follow someone, uh, to really shape our lives um, from the good things that we can see in the lives of uh, leaders around us. And it really builds us up. And uh, we can follow well when we are submitted to God. Uh, and our submission to the leader comes from there. I'm just reminded of uh, First Peter uh, that talks about submission, various uh, uh, levels. Uh, and also you know, where uh, it, it calls a slave to submit to their masters. And in our context today, uh, for us to be able to submit to our leaders in the workplace, in the church, and uh, you know, uh, other uh, other areas of our life. So let's close with a word of prayer. Uh, I would like to request uh, any one of us to please pray. Kiran, would it be possible for you to lead us? Yeah, I'll, I'll just pray. Or... Yes, please, Sam. Yeah. Uh, Father, we just thank you for this time, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. Um, Lord, all of us follow leaders, Lord, and I pray that you would give us the grace, you would give us the wisdom to be good followers, Lord. First of you, Jesus, our Savior, Lord, I pray that we would be good followers of you, Lord. And I pray that we will be good stewards and followers of our leaders, Lord. Give us the right heart. Give us the right posture, Lord. And I just thank you for this session. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that is imparted. I pray that it would um, fall on good ground. And I pray, Lord, that we would manifest whatever that is being taught, Lord, in our lives, in our, in our lives personally, Lord. And I pray that we would be great followers and we'd be great examples of great followers, Lord. The world needs good followers, Lord. And I just thank you for this session. Thank you, Lord, for our faculty. We just want to bless them. Uh, as we go about our days, I pray, Lord, that you would uh, bless us and keep us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you, Pastor Roshan, uh, for this really strengthening session. God bless you. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for connecting on the Mentoring Hour this morning. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Pastor. Bye.